Hello friends, happy Friday. Today we have the Oliva Series V Liga Especial. And it's a double something, I can't remember the ring gauge on it. It's a large ring gauge. Um, it's, it's the one they had, so I'm going to, uh, don't normally like them quite this big, but I'm not going to talk about that anymore because Christian takes it the wrong way. Sorry folks, that's an inside joke, but Bona Piper will get it. He was making fun of my, uh, some of my cigar descriptions last time. So I hope you're happy that Friday is here and you've had a good week and all that good stuff. I'm in my usual location. I am not going to be showing you the outside today. The excuse I'm giving is that it is raining, and it is raining. Um, but I've once again brought the wrong SD card. If any of you guys know of a good... Well, two things, actually. <coughs> oh, should open that window first. I would... I have a lot of SD cards. Um, you know, I've got, got multiple cameras. They all have multiple cards, and I fill them up with different parts of videos and things. And I would love to have some way to, to file those, uh, for lack of a better term. Like... You know, some sort of a box that they would slot into or something. Because right now they're just... I, I wound up putting them all in a little... Um, actually a little cigar tin for those you know, little short smoke cigars. Uh, which is fine, but I don't like them bouncing around and, and all that. So it would be... It, I don't know if there's a, any way to... like Any device that's designed to hold those things. And the other thing I'd really like to know is... Is there a good way to label them? Because nothing seems to write on them. Uh, stickers, you can't put a sticker on it because then it won't fit into the... To the thing. So it, I'd love to be able to somehow label them, but I, I haven't come up with any way to do that. So if any of you guys are SD card gurus, I don't know if that's a thing. So you'll just see my smiling face for the rest of the ride. And we're off. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's chilly today. Very overcast, very cloudy. Uh, lots of rain, but that's okay. We actually had some fire warnings the past couple of days. I guess things have gotten quite dry, but it didn't seem like we've had you know a long time without rain. We seem to get rain pretty regularly. I'm not sure what led to the fire warnings, but we did have them. Oh, and very importantly, I have to stop at the grocery store to get some things for my wife, so do not let me forget that. All right. Um, so I went to the uh, to the eye doctor yesterday. I talked a little bit about this on Sunday. Um, I've got early cataracts and it turns out I, I, I learned something um, prednisone can actually cause cataracts to accelerate or, or to develop and I was on a ridiculously uh, high amount of prednisone for a couple of years uh, as, as I was going through my treatments and everything so it's probably not the chemotherapy that did it, but the prednisone, which I was taking to help me be able to take it. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's amazing how complicated these things can get, how convoluted they can get. But the good news is it's a, it's a very easy fix. Uh, the way he described it is they'll put a couple drops in my eye, they'll suck out the old lens, pop in a new one, and I'll see better than ever. Um, I will be anesthetized, that'll be like a twilight anesthesia, which is good. So we just fell out of that tree. Um, 
Shame I'd see now if I had the camera you would have seen it hit the hood of the car and oh well. So as I, as I was going through this exam, I was really struck by how modern and, and computerized everything is. You know, you, the doctor does very little. He just tells you to stick your head in and then lights flash and spin and whatnot. And then they've got an image of your retina, uh, not your retina, your, uh, your lens. And, you know, exactly where the cataracts are and all that. And then that all is used in guiding the surgery. And probably, you know, I don't know for a fact because I didn't get this level of detail, but I would imagine I'm going to, you know, have, have a, an image projected on my eye with, with lasers that'll indicate where the cuts go, if not actually make the cuts, because they can certainly do that with, with laser technology. And, you know, there's going to be very little for the surgeon to actually do it, and certainly it still requires a skilled hand. But, uh, yeah, it's just amazing, the, the technology, how it, how it has evolved. And I was thinking about that. You know, I, you guys that have known me for a couple of years now know that I'm a little bit of a, of a Luddite at times. Like, you, several of you have noted that I'm driving a standard transmission. I drive a standard transmission because I like it, and frankly, I don't like the automatic transmissions anywhere near as much. But automatic transmissions certainly are progress. You know, there certainly are new technology compared to what I'm driving. And I had some car trouble where I had a, another flat tire. It turned out I had a had a crack in the rim. I had to get a new rim put in, put on. And while they were doing that, they found there was a bad switch in the backup light system, so they had to replace that. They always find something else. So it, it turned out they needed to order a part, and uh, I needed to leave the car overnight on short notice, so they got me a rental. And the rental was a 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe. Beautiful car. Um, I, you know, r nice ride. Really, very ergonomic. I, I liked it a lot. Uh, I'm not an SUV guy, but it, you know, I, uh, for what it was, I, I really enjoyed driving this. With one major exception, the transmission on this car was one of the strangest things I've ever had to deal with. It somehow is, is computer controlled and adaptive. So it's changing how it responds. When you press the gas pedal, depending on how you've been driving, whether you've been going uphill or downhill, uh, whether you were at a full stop or if you're moving, it will actually change how it responds. Now that sounds like a good thing. And you know, maybe that gives you better gas mileage, but. I'm used to being able to figure out what the car is going to do and then taking advantage of that knowledge to control the car. But you couldn't do that with this because it was deciding what to do and all you could do was push the pedal down and wait to see what would happen. It was very strange. Um, and you know, I say it was the transmission, but I actually don't know that. It, it could have been an engine, I suppose. One really strange thing about the car is when you came to a red light, the, you know, when I stop at a red light, I'm, I'm going to be idling at, you know, probably 500, 600 RPM, something like that. Uh, this one went straight down to zero. And it was not a hybrid, it was not a, an electronic car or anything, or electric car or anything like that. It's just, you know, regular old gas guzzler, but uh, very strange. And... I started to think after the eye doctor experience, um, you know, about this this interplay between technology and skill. So certainly, in, you know, in, in surgery, it makes a lot of sense. You want the cutting edge technology. You want that to replace the skill because you're going to get faster recovery times, smaller incisions, lower risk of infection. You know, th there's a lot of reasons why that's good. 
and that is positive progress. How many people today know how to drive a standard transmission? In the United States, they're actually quite common in, in places like, like India, for example, they're, they're very common. Um, but in the United States, how many people know how to drive a standard transmission? Is that a good thing? We've, we've lost a skill. Now, maybe it's not a skill that we really need, but we've lost it. And if we wind up being slaves to these wacky, I'll do whatever I want when I want sort of cars, I don't know if that's progress. I don't know. And that got me thinking about woodworking, of course, because I have a one-track mind. Well, I have several tracks, but I couldn't think of a way to combine it with pipe smoking, so I went to woodworking. Um, I've been thinking a lot about old furniture, um, you know, furniture that was made 200, 300 years ago. And I, I never really was interested in furniture design before, but I've read a few books recently that kind of have piqued my interest in that. And I've been looking at these things more carefully. I've even gone to a few antique shops just to, just to look at things. And when you think about it, it's remarkable what could be done primarily with hand tools. And every, every molding, every, every curve, every joint had to be thought about. And, and every millimeter of that piece of furniture had been touched by the craftsman, had been thought about, had, had been worked on. Whereas the furniture that we have today is, is largely machine generated and I, I would be willing to guess that very little of it's been touched by a person. And even when we choose to, to do our own woodworking, you know, we've become so dependent upon the machines that we're losing the skill that those guys had 200, 300 years ago. And that's, that's really sad to me. And I, I, I guess that, that's kind of the way I feel about the, the transmission thing as well, although maybe that's not important. But this is important. You know, I, I don't think it's a good thing to lose that kind of a skill. It probably took hundreds of years to find it in the first place. So is it progress that I can go down to my basement and turn on the power router and whip out a hundred feet of molding tonight? Yeah, I guess, I, I, I think it is because if I need a hundred feet of molding, it's going to take me a really long time to do that by hand. But is it good that I wouldn't know how to do it by hand? And I wonder how many other aspects of life have that kind of a, a balance to them, where, you know, the progress is not just making things better, easier, but it's also making other things no longer viable. In the case of a surgeon doing a procedure by hand, when a robot can do it more accurately, that's a good thing. We don't want the surgeons doing it by hand because we're getting a better end result. But are we getting a better end result when we no longer have craftsmen, just programmers, machinists? I don't know. It seems like the soul goes out of things. Anyway, that's what I've been thinking about this week.